Hello, oh, this is another video. This is going to be hopefully a how-to and a review in one video. So Perudo is a game from about the 1800s. Um, it's also known as Liar Dice. Uh, I'll also call it Liar's Dice. Uh, the per name Perudo comes from it's apparently originating in Peru. Um, and I think Peru is, is a sort of another take on it. As if you are stuck not being able to take your turn uh, or get caught lying, um, it's uh, where that kind of word do or do do comes from uh, for you not being able to play and hence the name of the game. Uh, as you can see very clearly, it's two to six players and it's ages eight to uh, 108, uh, according to what they've tested it with. Um, there's another game called Lie, but in this instance, uh, this is quite a well-known um, printing of it or manufacturer of it. it. Comes in a tin. This particular one is um, the uh, the Paul Lamond games uh, printing of it, and I'm just going to show you what's inside. So it comes now. The strange thing is, it comes with uh, a rule book which. For the size of it, I was going to curve round. Thankfully, it's relatively uh, uh, flat afterwards. And um, this is sounds interesting. This travel version does not contain a copper cup. This is only provided with the deluxe version. I haven't seen the deluxe version, but uh, looks like it's possible. Um, so yeah, Perudo KBK allows you to ob obtain that. It's a bag that used for dice, and it comes in its little wooden container pouch for it. Uh, six cups for each player and um, I'm going to show you an example with two and I leave it so there's always two available. So if I leave this just to one side, uh, therefore you can kind of keep the name in sight. What you're going to do, each player takes one cup and what comes with it is five dice. Might make a bit of noise in this table, but at least you get to hear what the table sounds like when it's rolled on them. So you're secretly going to roll. We're going to take a look at what these are. So everybody else rolls, so let's just have green go, and, and they can see that. So this counts as a wild, I'm explaining what they're going to be doing. Uh, you don't move them around, but I'm just making it easier. So they've got three twos there, and I just knocked it, so you need to be very careful. Um, so in this instance, um, one player, so let's say red starts, they need to say a number, uh, say the amount, so they say one, and they say one, three. Now, as you can see, they're lying. They don't have it. But what they don't know is whether or not this player has also has got a, a three there. And uh, so this player looks and goes, hmm, well, I'm not going to call them out for a start because there's a wild. So actually, there is one three. In fact, there's another one. So there's two threes. So now they can raise it. So they don't know what they've got, but they know they've got twos. So they could say one four or one five or one six, but they don't want to get called out even though they've got this one. So let's just scale it up a bit. So they have to increase it. So they're not doing four, five, or six, and they could say two twos, two threes, two fours, two five, two sixes. But because they've got so many, they're gonna to choose to chance in, say they could say three twos and see what they come back with. So let's try that out. Three twos. Now they are over here and they're thinking, well. I don't know anything other than perhaps they've got twos. Um, I don't want to go any higher than uh, the amount three because they've only got a max amount of two. But if I could say maybe not two fours, but two sixes, or three fours, but let's say three sixes, it means that they have to raise or call them out. So in this case, they'll say three sixes. Now, this player, again, doesn't know, but they know they've got one of these uh, counting towards them. So I choose to not say anything, and again, ignoring that three, because they definitely can't win if they go up to, say, four. They say four twos. Now, at this point, uh, they've only got um, two things that are the same. So in that instance, it's not a good idea to probably try risking it. This isn't normally on there. That's just for here, and you're just using a hand. I've never seen these get knocked, so don't worry about that. Um, and this time, four twos, they don't want to risk it, they're going to call them out. So this player goes, no, look, I've got four twos between them. So you collect, check everyone else out, and now because red lost, they play with one fewer die, and now they all go again, so you roll your dice, roll your dice, and um, the player who was called out starts. Okay, so that's how you play, and the game takes 
I find the game takes around 20 minutes, but it does depend on the number of players. Teaching with a group, I seem to take um, maybe up to about an hour, sometimes longer. It comes down to how long people um, take to think. What I do like is the stacking, even with that extra die on top, because it's five, they still stack quite nicely. So it still fits in the box. And uh, that's handy for obviously getting a two player game to go. It does work as a two, but I think it is better with more players. I frequently have played it with six um, or maybe five, um, and it uh, works well in that context. Uh, people who like this game include some very well known um, intellects, shall we say, um, at least known for his uh, commerce ability, and that's Sir Richard Brunson, as well as Stephen Fry. So that is Perudo, and uh, yeah, take a chance on that one. Let's have a look and uh, see how much it's going to weigh, because again, it's another tin, and see um, uh, how it's going to get you about. 719, so it is a bit, bit of a weight to it, um, but it's not too big, it's slim, and you can carry it uh, in you know, the side of your bag whilst you've got other things in there so yeah check it out that's perudo